Now, I love finding out about new tools that expand what we can do with WordPress. And today, we're going to be taking a look at Cubio, a block level plugin for Gutenberg that has one interesting feature that I think makes it a little different to a lot of the other block tools that are out there right now. This integrates and plays nicely with full site editing. So if you want to edit template files, you want to edit the various different files inside that full site editing experience, this gives you those options. Now, I'm only going to be taking a look at the free version. There is a pro version that has a lot more features, but we're only going to check out the free version today. If you want to find out more, link will be in the description below. So I've got a clean, fresh install of WordPress. Let's hop over into the plugins and add new. Let's search for Cubio. And let's go ahead and install this. As you can see, there's over 10,000 active installs. It's regularly updated and it's getting four and a half out of five stars. So good starting point. Let's activate it. And then if we want to, we can take a look at the two minute video on how to get started. And there's a YouTube channel with a range of different videos on Cubio to explain how to do various different things. I recommend checking those out if you want to find out more. For us though, we're going to just simply hop into the starter sites first of all and kind of set something up so we've got something to hit the ground running with. We can, if we want to, preview any of these. We can try them online. So if we want to click to preview, that will give us a demonstration of the site, at which point we can have a quick look through, see if we like the look of it. If we do, we can go ahead and install it. So I like the look of this one. That's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say import the site. And there we go. After a few moments, we now have our site. So let's go ahead and view this. And as we can see, we get exactly what we saw in the demo. So everything is installed, set up, configured, and we now have our starting point. This isn't just one page, though. We have additional pages like services, team, and so on. So all these are already created for us, and all the assets are downloaded. Now, what we can do is we can go ahead and start editing this, or we can come over to any of the pages and edit inside there. For this example, let's go to start editing. And there we go, that's now loaded in the home page, ready for us to start editing. So let's take a quick look at the interface because it looks a little different to what we're used to when we're working with your typical Gutenberg block level editor. Now you can see this tells us we're currently editing the front page of the site. And if we look at the top, you can see editing front page. However, if we click on this, this will open up where the first part of the integration with full site editing comes into play. You can see inside here now we've got our front page, our blog, contact, team services, and so on. We can come back out of here into our site content, and our templates are available for page templates, post, and general templates. We've got template parts, so your headers and your footers, so you can come in and you can see we've got project page, template header, front header, and so on. So we can edit any of these kind of pages using the Cubio editor. So this is a nice way of being integrated into the whole editing process. So it's pretty smooth. Let's close that down. Now let's take editing with this. If you take a look at the top, you can see we can switch between the various different responsive modes. We can check that out. Obviously, we've got the preview and we've got save and so on. Now, if we take a look on the left-hand side, you can see things are broken down to various different components. We've got our navigation, which we can see at the top, our hero section. Then we've got our content. And then at the bottom, we have our footer. And also we've got things like page settings, general settings, and menus, so we can control and manage that all inside the one location, which is nice to see. We don't have to hop out of one to come back in and make changes. It's very smooth in the way that this is all integrated together. So let's take a quick look. If we come back up the top, you can see we've got a header. We can click on the cog icon, and that allows us to set up various different things. So we've got our layout, our style, and advanced. We can click the big plus if we want to add extra blocks in and so on. So very, very similar to what you're probably used to, whether you're using a page builder or using these Gutenberg block editors. It's going to feel very familiar very quickly. Let's come back out of this, though. If we click on the navigation, for example, we now have a range of different navigation options. Some of these are locked behind that pro paywall, which is totally understandable. But like I say, there's more than enough here in the free version to get an awful lot done. You could quite easily run an entire site using the free version and not have to worry about going for that pro version. If we want to, though, we can change the layout of various different aspects. So if we want a centralized logo and navigation, we can choose that option. And obviously, if we had the pro version, we could pick from another couple of options. Let's set that back to the original. Then we've got our normal settings underneath. So we've got options underneath things like stick on scroll, overlap hero, show top bar, and so on. Now, some of these are, again, locked behind the pro, pro paywall. For example, if we tried to use this, you see we've got to upgrade to the pro. Want to overlap the hero? We can do that if we want to. So you can have a sort of uh, your hero image will kind of show through. So we get a nice transparent navigation at the top. If you want to show your top bar, if you've got that, so you can see you've got phone numbers and social media and so on. And again, all totally editable. Let's turn those off, set it back to what it was. And we've also got options underneath then for the container width and so on. 
Hopping into style, you can see we can do things like set the background color. And we've got a global color system inside here, which we can tap into at any point. We can add custom colors. We can go in and change that global color if you want to. And everything will pick up and be consistent throughout our design, which again is one of the things I always like to see. And if you want to, you can change the background type and so on. Hopping over into advanced, this is where we've got control of things like the background, the spacing, borders and shadows typographic settings and so on. And also in the responsive modes, we can hide and show things on the various different kind of responsive devices. So you can easily set up different kinds of conditions to show and hide various different parts of your design based upon the viewer's device. And finally, we've got miscellaneous where we can deal with things like the Z index, the overflow options and so on. So everything you should need is inside here. And obviously, depending upon what you choose, you will have different options. So if we choose this heading, for example, you can see we can do things like set the heading type, the alignment, we can create links, we can animate this if we want to. So if we want different animations. We've got a selection for free and some of those, again, long behind that pro option. But again, you know, there's more than enough inside you to get a really good looking animated feature inside your site. And hopping over to style, we can set our text colors, typographic settings. So if we come in, all the options are inside here for our font family, the weight. We can work in pixels, M's and REM's. So it's always good to see that we've got those responsive, those flexible options for setting sizing up. And any transformation of all the things you're probably going to be used to. And again, we've got effects inside here. So you can highlight it, you can rotate it. You can do quite cool effects. So you can see we can do these curly underlines. We can say we want to rotate it and we can rotate what we want. So you can see you got some cool effects inside here. Let's set this back though to be none. And again, inside advanced, we've got again a lot of those same kinds of options. If we hop back out of this, you can see we can also go in and edit our hero section. So again, we've got various different options inside here for pre-designed kind of layouts. So if you use something like Stackable, where you've got these kind of pre-designed kind of setups for various different parts of the design, this is again going to feel very, very familiar to you. Okay, so we've got all these different kinds of options and you can see we can break things out into the various different sections. We've also got a very comprehensive templates gallery. So for example, let's scroll right the way down to the bottom and say we want to add a new section in. So we say add a pre-designed section, we'll click and then this will open up. We've got blocks, we've got sections, we can choose the different kinds of sections. So you may want this to be a team, for example. You can find a layout that you like the look of and then simply go ahead, click to insert it. That will insert it and then you can make whatever changes you want. And as you can see, it is very quick to work with. And again, we've got all the options at the top then for how we want things to lay out. Any additional options that may be available. We can select the parent, you know, all the things you're used to doing. So now we can select the container. You can also come in and edit the container by using this little cog icon in the corner. And we can do things like change the background. So all those options are there. And the nice thing is when you select something and highlight it on the left hand panel to show you what feature it is that you're going to be choosing and editing. So that's pretty cool to see. It's a nice little quality of life type of thing. You can edit your section layouts. Again, you can see they can change this between containers and full. We've got spacing options. We can overlap the section if you want to. So you don't have to play with negative margins if you're not comfortable with that. And again, you've got your style options again with the global colors, your advanced options and so on. So all the things you should need. If you want to go ahead and create a blank section, you can click and you've got your predefined layouts inside there, which are again, fully editable. So we can select that. You can come over, you can choose the options. You can see we've got our background, our dividers. We can choose the hover effect, the different layouts we've got. We want to have spacing options on there, any entrance animations. So there's an abundance of things here, I think is what I'm kind of getting at. Now, if we move down to things like the page settings, general settings and menus, this is where we can control things globally. So page settings, for example, we can set featured image, we can allow comments. So again, this means we don't have to hop out of this page or post into the actual normal WordPress editor to set these things or disable them. If we've forgotten, we can actually do it directly inside you. And again, if we come down to the general settings, this is where we've got those options you'd see inside the customizer. So things like type, site identity, typography, form elements, color schemes. And this is where I was talking about earlier on, we've got our color scheme, for example, if we want to change this, we can choose something different and it updates the color scheme accordingly. So you can see we can very quickly edit those. We can also come in and add our own custom colors should we want to and choose whatever we want from there. And we can choose the various different kinds of modes. So you want your hexadecimal, your RGB, your HSL. And you can also set things up like standardized global spacing and those kinds of things. So this is kind of what you're getting with this particular plugin. Like I say, I think there's enough inside you to get creative. You can do 
pretty comprehensive designs with animations, with global colors and styling and typography. You've got an abundance of different templates. If we go in, like I said, to the template gallery, you can see there's an awful lot. We've got starter sites, so full sites like we saw right back at the beginning. You've got pages if you want to pull these in. Again, based upon those global starter site designs. Your sections, if you want to break things down, and you can see there's over 200 different sections, and you can favorite any of these if you find you have things you want to use again and again. Simply go ahead and click on the little heart. Some of these log behind the Pro Paywall, lots of them are free. So again, more than enough to get you started up and running to test things out. And that full site editing integration is nice to have as part of this. Well, that's basically the QBO plugin itself. This is the free version. If you're interested in the pricing for the Pro version, you can see they start at 79 euros and go up to 299 euros. And there are lifetime plans should you want to jump on that. They start at 169 up to 674. So there's more than enough available for most use cases on the free. And if you want the Pro, there's the options. But this is QBO. This is, in a nutshell, just a really quick overview of the actual plugin itself, what it brings to the table, and some of the things I quite like about it. But what are your thoughts? Have you tested this out? Is this new to you? What are your thoughts on this? Would you hop on it? You're going to test it? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.